And so as we prepare to receive the word of God into our hearts, let's go before the Lord for just a moment in prayer. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you this evening for this opportunity to proclaim the good news, for that's exactly what it is. It is good news, life-changing transformation news. Father, the proclamation of your word brings life and health and healing to all of our flesh. Holy Spirit, we ask you tonight just to speak through me and and to help me teach this message in a manner that, that... that is understandable and not so theological, but Father, that it just resonates in the hearts of those that are listening. And every person, the sound of my voice, goes away with something from heaven tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I just want to welcome you to His Grace Church and introduce myself. I'm Pastor Michael Pilmore. And you know, I like to say I'm going to be your training host during this segment of Back to the Basics on Health and Healing. And so in this lesson, what we're going to, what we're going to, re, we're going to review is how God showed us His will for health and healing in the Old Covenant by looking at how God promised us well-being and long life. You know, my grandmother used to say, only the good die young. But that's a fallacy. That's an untruth, and that's a lie, because God's Word doesn't declare that if you're good enough, you can die young. God's Word says, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation, Psalm uh, chapter 91. So throughout the scriptures, we will see tonight that God's promises for his people have always been and always will be uh, long life. Uh, Could I, uh, I forgot to uh, (laughs) cleanse my glasses, baptize them, if you will. So uh, they're a little stained, hallelujah. I'm seeing through a diversity of, of stuff. Thank you. And so, you know, as we begin this subject, you might be thinking, well, I know someone, I know, just like I do, I know a plethora of people who per se did not have long life upon the face of the earth. So do we base our, uh, uh, our analysis on people's um, ability or not the ability, but their, uh, how do I want to say this? Do we base our analysis on their facts, or do we base the, the, our analysis on the truth of the Word of God? Because the truth of the Word of God declares that we will live long, as we say, I know some of you may not understand this, but live long and prosper, right? So, but as, as, all of us know people who have gone home to be with the Lord prematurely. It's important to note this promise of long life is based upon our faith and our obedience to Him and His Word. Amen. So tonight we're going, to be, we're going to look at a multiplicity, a plethora, if you will, of scriptures to help us see what God really does say. If we're not careful, we'll begin to to declare what other people say about a subject and believe what people say. But if if it doesn't say faith comes by hearing and hearing by what your pastor says, it doesn't say faith comes by hearing and hearing by what your parents say, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So let's begin by looking at what God's Word says at long life and see what conditions might be attached to it. Amen? So we're going to begin this evening right in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It says, Honor your father and your mother, then you will have long life. I need my phone. Then you will have long life, uh, and, and, and then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So... Honor your father and mother. That's what it says in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 16 goes on to tell us again. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will have a long life, a long full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Isn't that interesting? 
if we will honor our parents, our, our, our father and our mother, then we will have, then, then we will have long life. Now, you know, sometimes as parents, we want to use that scripture to, to have our children honor us. But what does the word honor really mean? It means to uh, regard with great respect. To regard with great respect. It also means to, sorry, I'm talking faster than I'm, It's also can be um, a title of respect. A person or a thing that brings credit. We honor our, our parents. Another word for honor might be respect. Something regarded as a rare opportunity and bringing pride and pleasure a privilege. Have you ever thought of your parents as a rare opportunity? As uh, uh, that's, that brings pride and, pride and pleasure? That it's a, your parents are a privilege. I don't know about you, but sometimes I didn't think my parents were a privilege. Especially when I was a teenager. So... And it's, it, it, it's the ability to pay public respect. So when we honor somebody, we respect that person. Amen. When we honor somebody, we then give them a conferred distinction. When we honor someone, we regard them as a rare opportunity and bringing pride and pleasure within our lives as a privilege. When we honor God, we have to recognize the opportunity that we have and the rare privilege that we have to be his children because he loved us. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3 says, again, quoting from the Old Testament, Paul writing the church of Ephesus, children obey your parents because you belong to the Lord for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with, now notice this, with a promise. And here's the promise. If you will honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. So see, here's a condition. If we're going to have long life upon the face of the earth, we're going to have to honor, we're going to have to respect our parents. That doesn't mean that Everything our parents do or did was right. It doesn't mean that everything our parents do or did did not sometimes bring, you know, we could say emotional pain, separation. But that's where, that's where forgiveness comes in. The most powerful gift that God has given us is to be able to forgive. And sometimes we hold grudges against our parents for things that happened in our childhood that has caused us to move into our adulthood, maybe emotionally damaged, maybe physically damaged. But forgiveness is, is a powerful tool when it comes to honor. So the first condition that we're looking for then is honoring our parents in long life. And if we honor our father and mother, God promises us this. He promises us things will go well for us. And we'll have a long life on the earth. So what does it mean then to live long on the earth? Well, if you're 20 years old, it means a lot of things, but if you're 60, 70, and 80, it could take on a broader definition. By definition, the word long in reference to life can mean lasting or taking a great amount of time or long interval period. I like that. 
long interval, right? Because I don't know about you, but When I was in my 20s and 30s and 40s, I was immortal. <laughs> Life just didn't seem that it was ever really going to come to an end. But when I got into my late 50s and then turned into my 60s, I, one day I woke up and I realized that there was probably less in front of me than I had behind me. Now, I believe I'm going to live quite a long time. But the promise is still 120. And at 60, I would be halfway through it. So if, if, I, if, I, if I say, well, praise God, I, I'm going to live to 120, hypothetically, amen, then at 60, at 61, I've got more behind me than I have ahead of me. And so one day I woke up and I realized mortality does exist. As we begin the aging process, we begin to understand that there comes a day where you realize you're mortal. And that was, that was an eye-opener for me, because for many years I didn't even think about that. I just existed and just, you know, know I was going to live long and prosper. And so, but again, by definition, the word long in reference to life is a lasting life taken a great amount of time. I don't know about you, but as I have began to age a little more and, and I realize that somehow time seems to speed up. <laughs> and when we look at, again, this word long life, it can also mean extended or prolonged over time. Prolonged over time. God wants to prolong and extend our life here on the earth. So this saying that only the good die young would be, would be incorrect according to the word of God because God actually wants to extend and prolong our life over time. And he wants to make sure that we have a long extended life here on the earth. He doesn't want to shorten it as maybe some would have us to believe. And as I said, when I was growing up, I heard this quote over and over and over again because this was part of my grandmother's belief system because as she began to, to age and get into, into that aspect of mortality, she would always say, only the good die young, so I must not have lived a good life. See, that's the perspective of the devil. He's trying to get you to see something that's not true, where in fact, God is honoring your life and extending your life here on the earth because of his word, of his truth, and how you have honored your family. And so as far as God is concerned, again, living a short life or only the good die young would be incorrect because as we just read, if we honor our father and mother, we will live a long life. Now, people say, well, you know, we'll live eternally with the Father. But when we're talking about long life, what are we talking about? In heaven? Yes, we're going to be eternally in heaven. That's going to be a long life. But here on the earth is what we're talking about. We're, we live that life, that extended life here on the earth. And so... When we, we looked at another word for honor, which was respect... So if we respect our parents, if we honor our parents, we will live a long life. But then that's only one, one uh, condition. What might be another condition for long life? Well, how about obey the Lord's commandments and serve him? Exodus chapter 23 verse and 25 tells us you must serve the Lord Oh, you must serve only the Lord your God. You must serve. Isn't it? I like that word serve. You must serve the Lord only your God. What does that mean? Because if you do, I will bless you. I will bless you, the Lord says. I, I, I don't, the way that I operate sometimes, something just resonates on the inside of me. I have to remember to bring something bigger. 
Typing on my phone is a real joy. So what does it mean to serve? It means It means to, tra to treat or act toward someone in a specified way. Well, how do we act before the Lord? You must serve the Lord only. You must honor and respect the Lord your God, for as if you do, I will bless you with food and water, and I will protect you, notice this next word, from illness. I will protect you from illness. There will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land, and I will give you a long, full life. Now, does that sound like only the good die young? No. So if we serve the Lord, what does he promise us? He tells us he will bless us with food and water, with provision. He will protect us from sickness and disease if we'll serve the Lord. There'll be no miscarriages, infertility in our land. And then he goes on, I will give you long full lives. Say that with me, long, full lives. That's what he promises us. Notice in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 40. If you obey all the decrees and commands I'm giving you today, all will be well with you and your children. I'm giving you these instructions, so here's why I'm giving you these instructions. So you will enjoy a long life in the land your lo the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Oh no. God doesn't shorten your life. He wants to extend your life. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 33 says, Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then... Notice again, there's a condition to the promise. Stay on the path that the Lord your God has commanded you to follow. Then you will live long and prosperous lives in the land you're about to enter and occupy. Woo! Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 2 says, And you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. Respect. That, that doesn't mean tremble in fear like I'm afraid of, of God. That means honor and respect your God. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord the sword unto your ancestors to give you. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 24, it says, And the Lord our God commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him or to respect him, to honor him, so that he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. So, if we will honor and respect our God and obey his word, his laws, his decrees, then, we'll, then he will continue to bless us and what? Preserve our lives as he has done unto this day. So, if we keep the Lord's word and obey him, what does he promise to do according to this verse? He promises that he will preserve, he will sustain our lives. And that we will enjoy long life. We will live long and we will live prosperously. So we can say it like this. We will live long and prosperous lives here in the earth. Not when we get to heaven. Here in the earth. 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 14 goes on to tell us that if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands as your father David did, I will. That's a statement of fact. It doesn't say maybe if I feel good. He says I will. I will give you long life. That doesn't sound again to me like only the good are going to die young. It says to me that God's promises are yes and amen and that I can live long on the earth and enjoy the blessings of God while I'm here. With long life will I satisfy him and show them my salvations. In Psalm 
91. So, again, we see here that God promises Solomon long life. Well, I, as well as promising him long life, what do we notice here in the, third ch in the third chapter, the 14th verse of 1 Kings? If you obey my decrees and my commandments. In other words, if you honor me and serve me by fulfilling my word or following my word, or we could say it better like this, submitting yourselves to my word and serving me or respecting me and honoring me through obeying my word, what's going to happen? We will live long and prosperous. So if we obey the decrees of heaven or the decrees of the word, we can see where, again, the condition is you can't just live. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Now, when we sin, we may not so, so, die instantaneously, though there are times where because of poor judgment, um, we, lives are lost, you know, and I'll give you an example. Poor judgment would be, you may be in a bar and having a few drinks too many. Poor judgment then enables you then, because you've partaken of the alcohol, not to make a good, sound decision. So you get behind the wheel of the vehicle. And as we have seen many times over the last several years, um, especially with the younger generation, they get behind the wheel because they do not have um, proper judgment and drive. Sometimes they get on the interstate driving the wrong way at a high rate of speed, resulting in an accident that creates um, pain and suffering for others. Sometimes they lose their life, sometimes they don't. But their life has is, is already been destroyed because of that judgment. But you see, if we honor God and follow his decrees and follow his word and obey his laws, then we have a promise of long life. That doesn't override common sense. Many believers have gone on to be with Jesus early because they overrode, number one, common sense, and maybe they overrode the inward leading of the Holy Spirit and did something that uh, God was trying to protect them from. But Psalms chapter 90 and verse 10 tells us 70 years are given to us. 20 years? 30 years? No, 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80, but even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. So according to this scripture, what I want to point out to you is how many years can we expect God to give us? Well, it says we can expect 70. Some live to 80. The Bible goes on to say that, you know, we can live up to 120. But again, it comes back to when we become satisfied. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. So did you know that according to the World Health Organization, in 1950, the life expectancy of the world, according to the stats that were available 40, 44, 45 years ago, um, was 45.5 years of age. That was the life expectancy of the human being in 1950. Most of us, if we were living in 1950, would have been dead. Today, the current life expectancy in the world in 2022 is where I pulled my analysis from is 72.98, so 73 years of age. Now, when you're 60, that may not sound very old. But when I was younger, I remember my parent, my grandparents being my age, and they were old. <laughs> they were really old. Massively old. And just to be honest with you, sometimes I, I, I walk past the mirror in the morning, and, and it's hard to see myself as my grandparents. I believe that, at, you know, they aged differently back then because life was differently. didn't have all the modern conveniences that maybe that we have today. 
But if we think about our grandparents, we even think about our parents. One thing that we all have in common is they were once young too. So let me give you a few more stats tonight. The 85 and older population is projected to more than double from 6.6 .6 million, which was which what it was in two, uh, 2019, to 14.4 million in 2040, an increase of 118%. The number of persons age 65 and older in, uh, in, in 1900 were approximately 3.1 million. In 2019, the average jumped to 54.1 million. And by the year 2060, it is expected to jump to 94.7 million. See, as science has made vast improvements in the medical field, and really mankind is learning to take better care of ourselves, what's beginning to happen is our life expectancy has improved since 1950. 1950. So, again, the life expectancy or the average person eight, 65 years and older in 1900 was 3.1 million. 6.6 .6 million in 2019. But here's, here is something that is also just as important that long life is not all based on science, but as we've just read in our previous verses, honoring, respecting the Lord with our lives. And how do we do that? By following his precepts, and his laws. Psalms chapter 91 and verse 16 says, I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. So what does God say? He will reward us. It's a re long life is a reward that he gives us. So would a long life with sickness and disease be rewarding? Would it be satisfying? How about even enjoyable? No, I don't think so, do you? Would a life cut short by sickness and disease fulfill this scripture? With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. No, I don't think so either, do you? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, My child, never forget the things that I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. Store them. You know, I think about storage on a computer. I have a, I don't know, you know, there, were, there was a time in my life I didn't, I didn't have a computer. And I remember my father-in-law had one of the first computers I'd ever seen, 1987. That thing had a total of 40 megabytes hard drive. That was it. Now in today's reality, that's not much, but that was something back then. Now we're talking in terabytes, and yet we still fill our computers up. When our computer begins, gets so full, what happens? It doesn't run right, so we need more space. We need to free things up. But one of the great things about the computer, it has, a, it has a hard drive where I store things and I can recall things. And the same is true with the Word of God. It says right here, never to forget the things I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. Place them in your heart. Just like your operating system, just like your, your, your hard drive. You need those laws and precepts stored in your heart so that you can have the availability to pull them back out when necessary. When I need a file, I go into the hard drive where it's located. 
I pull it out and it pulls up on my screen and I begin then to use that particular file. We need to have an understanding of the Word of God so that in the time of trouble, when we're going through things, we can go into our resource file and pull out His Word for that moment of time. You know, I may not need uh, a dictionary every day on my computer, but when I do, where do I go? I go to the dictionary. You may not need a specific word every day, but there are days you need a word. You have to have that word stored in your heart. His commands are stored in your heart. And if you do this, what will happen is you will begin to build a repertoire that when in time of trouble, when in time of need, or when you need encouragement or something's going on, you can go back in and pull that word out and begin to declare it out of your mouth. And what happens if you do this, the Bible says, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. The reason many of us do not have satisfying in lives is that we don't meet the conditions by storing the Word of God in our, in our hearts. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 through 16 says, Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Notice what wisdom offers you. It offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. God, he just wants me broke and dead. No, God don't want you broke and dead because right here it says if we gain wisdom, Wisdom comes, you know, the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and he will give it to him liberally. In other words, he will not withhold it, but he will give you the more than enough wisdom. What did Solomon ask for when God came to him and said, you know what? You can have anything you want. He didn't say, well, I want so-and-so and I want riches and I want money and I want land. I want provision. I want this. No, he said, I want wisdom. Because if you have wisdom, wisdom comes with long life, riches, and honor. One thing I know about wisdom is it is something that is gained through experience in life. A lot of times, you know, when I was 18 years old, I thought my daddy was pretty stupid because I knew more than he did. By the time I got to be 25 years old, I realized he wisened up a lot. But it wasn't his wisdom. It was the fact that I was gaining understanding and knowledge and realized he was a lot smarter than I was. When I would talk to my grandfather, my grandfather, he lived to be 99 and three quarters. And all of his life, I considered him one of the wisest men on earth. He, he read, he was studied, he, he, I mean, he was not collegiate, but, you know, he ran his own business, he was an entrepreneur, and just, just the things that he learned through life, if you just sit down and listen to him, wow, it would save you a lot of heartache. Sometimes if we would just sit down and listen to the Holy Ghost, it would save us a lot of heartache. He knows the future. Just like you know your past, He knows the future. And so, within wisdom comes long life, riches, and honor. Then in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27, it says, Fear of the Lord, respecting the Lord, honoring the Lord lengthens one's life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. Only the good die young. That's not what the Bible says right here. Fear of the Lord lengthens one's life, but, years of the, but the years of the wicked are cut short. So what prolongs our days? What prolongs our days and gives us long life? Well, according to these scriptures we've just read, Fear of the Lord, honoring the Lord, respecting the Lord, and of course, wisdom. Following his decrees, 
honoring our parents. But in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 7, 27, it says, The wicked's life are cut short. God honors us. As we honor him, he honors us with long life. So according to these scriptures that we looked at tonight, my grandmother's favorite quote that only the good die young, then it would have to be an incorrect statement according to God's word. Because if I'm good, let me, let me say it like this. Because of who I am in Christ, I'm in right standing. So I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we come back to the word of God, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, my child, never forget these things I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. It's important to not only store those commands, to review those commands, to study those commands, to study the Word of God, to renew your mind with the Word of God, so that when in the time of trouble things do arise, you are not having to begin the process of believing God or storing that Word in your heart so it can then facilitate a better outcome that better outcome is facilitated because you are pulling off the source already that's in there, the Word of God. The Bible says, if that same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of us, He's going to quicken and make alive our mortal bodies. It's important for us to store His decrees, His laws, and His Word in our heart well before the time that we need it. Because what I have found as a pastor, there are times where, where life-threatening situations do arise, whether in your body or in your life, and because you have not taken the time of preparation, you have not taken the time to store God's Word in your heart. It's not living there. It's not abiding there. So now, have you ever been so hungry that, man, you are famished? It, it, you are so hungry that it hurts? You've gone beyond. In fact, you're so hungry, maybe you're lightheaded. You know you've gone beyond the point that you should have gone. And so what do you try to do is you try to, to eat very quickly and to fill that void. But in doing so, sometimes what happens is that you've gone so long and you're so famished that by the time you get to the place where you're satisfied, you can almost eat yourself sick. Or you just don't have the strength necessary. That's sometimes true. There's a time of preparation. And when it comes to meal preparation, sometimes you have passed. It takes you too long to be able, like a diabetic. They have to eat regularly to keep their blood sugar stable and, at, you know, and if they eat too much of the wrong food, it goes too high. But the other side is if they don't eat consistently and consecutively, their blood sugars may drop. And they may drop to a life-threatening degree before they can get it corrected. Now, there are things out there that help us to, to, you know, little tablets that can instantly raise your blood sugar. But the point is, had they, they had lived uh, according to... Um, the process necessary of food preparation, eating on time, taking care of that, that need, there wouldn't be such a regulatory up and down of their blood sugar, which becomes unhealthy. The same is true with the Word of God. If we will store that Word in, you see, when we, when we partake of food, we store things into our body. We store the sugars, we store the glutens, we store all this stuff that I don't know nothing about. I'm not in the health, but I do know that you can maintain some sort of a regulatory condition with your sugars by eating properly. And so <clears throat> when we come to the Word of God, and if we don't do that, then, you know, we'll, we're going to do this and it may become unhealthy. One moment you're too low, then the next moment you're too high. There has to be a balance in our eating style, in our eating habit, to keep our blood sugars uh, in a normal productive range. The same is true with the Word of God. There has to be uh, 
a balance in how, you know, as, as we don't ever, listen, if we don't ever eat food, we're going to get really hungry and we're going to lose weight. We're going to become unhealthy and things are going to go array for us. So God has sustains us through the different avenues of, of that we have available in a lifestyle of eating, not overeating. The same is true with the word of God. If we don't ever put any, any word in us, there'll be nothing to sustain us in the time of trouble, in the time of need. Sometimes, you know, if you don't eat properly, you get up to go out to do a job or something, you may get faint, you may get light, you just may not feel well. It's amazing to me how sometimes if I don't eat or I'll skip a meal, sometimes I just forget to eat. I try not to, <laughs> but what happens is I, 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 I may get to doing something and feel not just li not lightheaded, but just lacks of days ago, don't have any real energy, don't really feel all that great. Then I get that food in me, it's all of a sudden, whoo, let's go, let's do this. And the same is true, um, the same is true with the Word of God. It sustains you, it empowers you, it strengthens you, and then it keeps you steady. So in the time of trouble, in the time of need, when things are going on, you don't have to be cramming per se, you can be letting what's already inside of you just percolate and give you the energy and encouragement or whatever is necessary at that moment of the time to sustain you through the, through the trouble. Does that make sense? And so long life is something that God has already promised us. My favorite scripture, again, is Psalms chapter 91, verse 16. I will reward them with long life, and I will give them my salvation. I will satisfy them with a long life. Kenneth E. Hagan is a, uh, a teacher that I have followed all of my adult life since. One of the things that I heard him say over and over again, you'll know when I'm gone, I got satisfied. So... With long life, I will satisfy. So does that mean that we know when we're going to die? No. No, we don't know the day or the hour. But the Bible says that with long life, I can hold to the fact that I will live long on this earth and I will prosper according to the word of God. If I honor God, if I reverence God, I put his decrees in my heart and I follow his word. Amen? So again... Only the good die young would be an incorrect statement if, if that's something you've been saying because the Word of God does not facilitate that as a promise. The Word of God facilitates long life upon the face of the earth. I will reward them. I will honor them with long life and give them or satisfy them with my salvation. Now, uh, next week in our next lesson, as we continue to look at God's, uh, the basics on health and healing, we're going we're gonna to look at how God's redemptive work then was accomplished through Jesus Christ. So this is going to conclude our lesson on back to the basics on health and healing and how God promised us well-being and long life. I'm Pastor Michael Pilmore. Thanks for watching. <music>